What's good, baby? We're back in the gymnasium. We got chest and back again, but you're gonna witness me improve and you're gonna witness muscle breakdown and adaptation before your eyes. We're gonna make improvements on every motherfucking movement. I have it all tracked, so I know what we're doing. I'm gonna cover what I didn't cover last time because I kind of just be going with the flow, what pops in my skull I share with y'all. Y'all are my little brother and we're, I'm trying to teach you how to grow or at least we're growing together. I know some of y'all bigger than me and shit, so if y'all just like the videos, I fuck with that too. We're gonna get this chest and back workout. Gummy worm is what was in my car, so gummy worm is what I'm taking. Just some rack. Code Monkey save you some moolah if you want some good ass tasting pre. My average body weight has been around 194 to 95. I think it's starting to taper off. I increased the calories to 3200. My body weight started climbing, but my body's responding really good. Like, pfft. my workouts have been superb. The pumps have been unfathomable. We did the blood work, my test levels, two weeks after my show. So I even did my diet another week after my show. One week off the diet, my test was 705, which is big chilling. Everything looked pretty good. Even my, most importantly, my heart health was good. It was in the green zone. There's like a green zone and an orange zone and a red zone. So we're in the green, healthy heart, healthy living. Whatever warm up you please. It's gonna start doing half of my working weight, 10 reps or so, and then I'll go a little bit heavier. 75, 80% of my working load, about six reps, feel it out. And then you can even get a heavier dumbbell than what you're working with and do two or three really strict reps. Preps your CNS to be handling heavier weight and the weight will feel lighter. But yeah, you can give that a try. If you're warm enough, you can just hop straight into the set like I'm probably gonna do. I've just been throwing my shit into sheets. Look how efficient your boy is. Thighs, calves, chest, I'm, I leak the whole program. Screenshot it. It's not that complicated, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, just structure your shit. You can play around with it. Look at the colors. Look at the customization. You can have fun with that shit. Let's see, I'm on week two. It's like elegant ass I, I hit 50 for eight clean reps. So I'm gonna try to go for nine to 10. I'm gonna try to improve best I can while keeping strict form, of course, but we'll see how it goes. We're warming up first. Just lay back, hug the tree, baby. Get them elbows close together, get the squeeze, control the eccentric, get that good, nice stretch at the bottom, and then come back up. Repeat. Focus. I told you I'd hit 10. That is heavy duty progressive overload bulking 101. So pre-exhaustion is a good tool. It's not of much more benefit unless you struggle with mind muscle connection like myself. That's why I choose to do flies first before chest. It just forces me to have a better mind muscle connection and plus pre-exhausting the muscle for my next movement, especially this one where it forces me into a strict incline press position. When your chest fails on this, your shoulders and triceps can't make up for it, if that makes sense. So when you're in a fixed position after the pre-exhaustion, it's really effective if you struggle with mind muscle connection, if that makes sense. So if you don't, just focus on progressive overload and hitting the weights and beating the log. You should be focusing on that regardless, but it's a good little tool. You can start out with flies. Same with legs. If you struggle with feeling in your hamstrings before a leg press, that's just what I'm doing. And hopefully it gives me some double Ds. I'm really 
really trying to get better at eliminating momentum with my movements, there's really no point in swinging around the weight if it's not under control, because then that just means you're using gravity instead of your muscles, which should be the thing working. It's the amount of work that you're putting in with the amount of strength that your body is capable of. You versus you. Just beat the log, eat enough calories, sleep enough, you chilling, homie. We all gonna make it. So with the no momentum, the best cue that I got for feeling your chest, other than getting your elbows close and squeezing and obviously feeling it, me telling you to feel it in your chest, I just focus on trying my hardest to pop my pecs, squeeze the weight up, if that makes sense. So instead of thinking of moving the weight, think of squeezing the weight up with your muscle. That helped me at least. And then you can always fuck around with grip, thumbless, or whatever feels best, especially with machines. That gets risky with barbells, obviously, uh, but when you're in a safe machine like this, you can play around with whatever's comfortable. So just feel it as best as possible. I got 155, I'm gonna try to get eight to 10 reps on this bitch. in like a half I was stuck see when you get stuck when your chest fails on especially incline machines good luck trying to somehow muscle that shit out cuz that's what it's built for bro that's good if you're seeking failure that's when I like to incorporate machines just get that set in rather than focusing on balancing the dumbbells and stuff I already got that done and covered with the dumbbell flies we're moving the Dorian press now that horizontal plane of gains we're gonna try to beat the log. We beat this, 10. I hit seven last week. So I hit 10 reps, 10 and a half. I don't count half reps. It's either one or none. 10 nonetheless, up three, baby. Gains. We got two bad bitches each side for six reps. So call an eight. I'm gonna get at least eight. I'll hit a slight warm up, like no more than six reps. Kind of just get used to the movement and then we'll try to beat the log book. I'll probably do like a plate in the 25 to warm up. I got, I got seven, so I improved, but I wanted eight. That felt good. If you got a hammer strength, any type of hammer strength press, they're awesome. I get a deep ass stretch. Sometimes people even have to put the blocks behind it right here to start off. I kind of like to get that full range just because I'm flexible. If you're not, you can set blocks there. Just don't compromise your shoulder just to get a movement in. Do what's comfortable and do what can get you a peak contraction at the end of the day if you're using a machine. That one kind of goes out and then goes in. I get a nice squeeze on it. And you can take a narrower grip too. Go a little bit in, like a little close grip and you get a better squeeze. We're done with chest. We're gonna do back now, the reverse grip pull downs. There was a longer bar, this one. This one's a little bit longer. <laughs> you wanna do overhand pull downs, whatever narrow grip, wherever you feel it best. I like doing this because I, I get crazy ass bicep activation on it. Plus it's the other primary mover for biceps other than just right here really good for your biceps but primarily the lat I get a really good squeeze on it and that's just me some people don't feel it I even saw someone going on a rant about reverse grip curls and how they don't feel it so if you got to go overhand and a little bit wider do that I did 170 for eight so I'm gonna try my darnest to get at least nine clean reps. Lat movements are a little harder for me to progress in drastically. It's usually just like a rep or two better. Hey, better, I said better. So that's all we're here for is to improve. So fuck 170. 170 was like the cursed number I could never hit on lat pull downs. Took me eight years of training. That's the thing about the training now. I probably spent six 
good years of my lifting experience, whatever you want to call it, career, just overtraining and not resting enough. Just a cycle of that. I was constantly getting hurt. My muscles were constantly inflamed. You can ask Drew, I always felt like my knees were about to explode from all the squats I was doing with powerlifting. You just got to work, work what's best for you. Some people need three rest days in between each session. I found that I'm able to even get just 48 hours in between each session. It's good. I kind of like to keep a 1-1 ratio. I think it should be 1-1. The amount of effort you put in the gym busting your ass on your sessions, and then resting equally as much, taking care of your body, sleeping, all that jazz that we talk about here. I wouldn't recommend training back to back, because I mean, systemic fatigue is a thing. If you've ever busted your ass on a day and the next day you wake up kind of like fatigued and not really sore in any particular muscle group or anything, you just feel like shit. That systemic fatigue, your nervous system, you get fried. Your CNS and your body recovering and building muscle. It's like a bunch of little workers. I'm tearing up my chest and back. All those workers tonight and tomorrow are going and repairing my shit, putting on more muscle. But if I go into the gym the next day and I train that same muscle group or muscle groups around that, we interrupt their work. You know what I'm saying? Let them cook, let them build the muscle, and you can rest. Oh, heaven forbid you go play basketball at the basketball courts or go on a nice walk with your family, have a picnic. We're going to shoot guns after this. You can go do whatever the fuck you want with your rest days. Just don't be training. Let them workers work, baby. It's like hot sauce, bro, all over your body. Hold me. Got mighty strong, 170 for 10 reps. We're gonna do the one arm dumbbell rows. Only unilateral stuff that I would do is that one seated row machine. Not really much else, so. I'm trying to get better at that because I got a lagging left lat. My right one's a little bit bigger, so I'm trying to correct that. Unilateral movements are good for building mind-muscle connection too, especially for your back, because it's hard. Or at least it was hard for me to build that mind-muscle connection. It took just feeling it outside the gym, posing, but single arm movements help a lot too, because you can just dial that shit in. Focus with one arm at a time, <sighs> squeeze that shit, put it back down. Under control, squeeze it, put it back down. Cable row, this is gonna force yourself to get your elbows in the right positioning to where you wanna feel it. You wanna get that full stretch on the way down with keeping your core tight. I'm just doing this for exercise variation. Preferably, you'd wanna have something, keeping that counter force on your chest so you can have a strict pull. Just get that full stretch, full extension, full contraction. Don't think of it as just driving your elbows back. You wanna think of just squeezing your entire back, everything just squeezing as hard as you can. Peak contraction, baby. God damn. God damn, that's a wrap.
What does that sound like? Is that loud? Huh? That didn't even sound loud. No, it's not. Does it have a ton of kick? No, not at all. Yeah, I think it's nice. Tuck it in the crease of your shoulder, bring it up, like, then bring your arm, like, ah, down. I'm trying to figure it out because I haven't shot it since I was a kid, so I don't have the same interior delt. <laughs> you better put it more out, because like, this gun doesn't kick at all. I kind of like, just want to fucking... Look, like, let me show you. Like, this motherfucker doesn't kick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got to introduce Tato. Tato's never been in a vlog. Um, really? This it's is, me, uh, the redneck Mississippi friend that supplies the guns. Hang on, hang on. We, we got to redo my intro. Now we introduce my childhood friend, Tato Martin. What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> <laughs> Shit! <laughs> I'll Venmo you for these, don't worry. <laughs> Dang, oh, it's out, go. it's out. I almost took out the whole gang. Power's going to my head, bro. Take it, babe. This, this looks like I'm about to take out a Panzer. <laughs> fucking origin zombies. No way! Yeah, this is different than Call of Duty, just a little bit. <laughs> okay. And you're gonna want to hold it with two hands. This one's yours. This yeah, one's got this a kick one's to mine. it. Babe, it's got a kick. Two hands and hold it. Fucking squeeze that shit. Go. <laughs> Babe. <laughs> Go, motherfucker! <laughs> Yo, I'm trying to get the shot. Damn it! God damn! <laughs> Fucking American sniper. You see him right there? Right there. The orange one. Show him. Show him. Oh, it's a feisty one. It's because it's close to me in season. Get fucked, mate. Yeah. I got him. Yeah, skeet time. You ain't you haven't shot skeet, have you? Nah, no, never. Fuck! Alright. <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> she like fell back <laughs> in the <you. laughs> Got the second one. <laughs> Follow it up and then right when it's about to drop, okay. get right under it and right as soon as it like stops rising, shoot. Oh, uh, you got this shit. Okay. Good. Oh. Fuck, I curved that one, my bad. Fuck yeah. Oh, I still shit. hit that shit. Under pressure. That was the last bullet, too. One in the chamber, baby. Yeah! Dude, that right there is why you stay in shape. That's why I stay in shape. Alright, we Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. This looks like a crazy ass, dangerous, like, FBI tape. Like, there was a crime like, on this every, tape or something. Uh, law enforcement person watching, these are all legal. This looks like, like, evidence, like right. a found footage. I tried to steal it. <laughs> me, bro. Redhead redemption. <laughs> Coming for all those motherfuckers that called you tampon him. <laughs> <laughs> Who's a ginger now? Shit. God damn right. Oh, Steph Curry, baby. Ooh. Three in a row. Three in a row, babe. Wait, why is it so zoomed in? Oh, I'm pressing some shit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's your zoomy right there. Flick. Oh, it's too easy. I said no rush it. Huh? 